most of the people what they will do is they will use a substring function a better and a more powerful function exists in mysql called hey guys welcome back to the channel on this channel we try to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions this video is in continuation of the sql 50 crack sql interview in 50 question series where we are trying to learn hands-on sql using 50 carefully curated questions used covering diverse aspects of sql so we are already done with the select and basic joins we are working on basic aggregate functions then we'll be working on sorting and grouping advanced select and join subqueries and finally on advanced string functions regex and clauses in our previous video we saw this question on queries quality and percentage and saw round and average aggregate functions in work and also learned about how we can check whether the value in a column is null or not. In this video, we are going to solve this question called monthly transactions part 1 and try to learn from it. So yeah, let's jump right in. So this is the 20th question of the series monthly transactions part 1 and if I look at the companies, the question has been asked in so Adobe and Wayfair. Okay, so let's see what the question has to say. We are given a table called transaction with five different columns, ID, country, state, amount, and transaction date, and their data types being integer, variable character, enum, integer, and date respectively. ID is the primary key of this table. This table has information about incoming transactions. The state column is an enum of type, which can take values approved or declined. We are asked to write a SQL query to find for each month and country the number of transactions and their total amount, the number of approved transactions and their total amount. Order of the result does not matter. Okay, let's go through this example. So there are four incoming transactions in the transactions table uh, and some of them are approved or declined based on the country, amount as well as the transaction date. So we are required for every month and country, what is the count of total number of incoming transactions, how many of them were approved, what is the total sum of incoming transactions and the sum of transactions that were approved. So let's take the example of, so for December of 2018, so we are not interested in the dates. It says for every month. So December of 2018, there are two rows and the country is US. So December of 2018 and US, how many incoming transactions are there? Two. How many of them have been approved? One. What is the total amount of incoming transactions? So 1000 plus 2000, that is 3000. What is the amount of the approved transactions? So 1000 and that is what we need to have in our output. Okay, so let me just drag it to the extreme right so that we are able to view this table properly. Okay, so for December of 2018 and US, two incoming transactions, one of them was approved. Total transaction amount that came in was 3000 and approved total amount is 1000. Okay, so that is what we need to do. Let me switch to Excel so that we can understand how to do this better. Okay. So this is the transactions table and for every month and country, we need to find out the four things that are given in the question. So the first thing that should come in your mind is that how can we remove the days from the dates in MySQL? So to format this date so that it only has month and year part, there are several ways to do it. Most of the people, what they will do is they will use a substring function. So it's called a substring. This is a function in MySQL where you can provide the name of the column, right? So the syntax of that is name of the column, starting index, and then after the starting index, how many characters, right? So the number of characters you want extracted. But the problem with this is it is kind of hard coding the thing. That is, you only can get a set of substring from a given string. A better and a more powerful function exists in MySQL called date format where using the data type of a column, you can extract anything out of it. Unlike substring where you can only get whatever is written exactly a part of it. If you use date format, you can not only get this 12 as a number, you can also get it as December, you can get the year, you can get week month, hour, like anything and it is very powerful. So in the sheet 2, I have listed down all the, so these are the various formats and we will learn about it, how to use it. But if you look at it, you can you get the numeric month name, you can get the abbreviated month name, weekday name, day of the month, hour, minute, second, day of the hour, AM, PM, seconds, everything, right? So it is very, very powerful 
function and that is what we need to use so what we can do is we can use the date format the syntax is you write it as date format then the name of the column and then the format in single quote so we need year part and the month as a number because that is what we had in our output let me go back so so year and month as a number so in this case if i go back to the list how do we get the year part we need to use let me scroll down okay so if i use percentage capital y it will be year as a numeric four digit value so let me go ahead and uh, switch to seat one so if i write percentage capital y and then we also need a dash and then how to get month as a number between 0 0 and 1 2 if we go above we can find that okay if i use percentage small m then that will do our trick so here if i write percentage small m and this thing should be entirely in parentheses so this is going to give you this is going to this part is going to return you so here instead of column we need to write transaction date so because we are going to use the transaction date part right so here if i do 2018 12 this is going to return this then 2018 12 then this is going to return 01 and 2019 01 so this is what we will get so if i go ahead and start writing this query let me switch back to lead code and let me drag it on the left so from this table called transactions transactions if i group by the thing date format tra transaction date and in this particular format and then we need to also return the country for every month and country so we also need to group by the country part and then let us return this so return this and this should be aliased as month so as month then country and now the first thing that we need is transfer count so here how many transfers in a part so we grouped by this thing right so this is what we are calling now as month okay so this is our month now for a particular month and country we need the count of total incoming transactions so if we just count this id and an id contains unique value as given in the question so if we count the id column that is going to give you the total number of transactions for a particular month and country so if i do count of id and that will give us transaction count now how can i get the approved count let me switch back so how can i get the approved count so here in this one right so this this is one group this the highlighted part is one group so in this one is approved one is declined so what we learned in our previous video is that if we use the if function to check a particular condition and if that condition is true we can assign one value if it is not true then we can assign another value so if we check state is equal to approved assign the value one else you assign the value zero and then you sum that part up so that will give you one plus zero is one and that is what the count of approved transactions so one so since approved one declined zero approved one approved one how are we getting this we need to write this part of the code so if the state is equal to approved then you assign the value one else you assign the value zero and what do we need to do now sum this up so sum this up and that is going to give you the approved count okay now we need to get the transfers total amount so it is kind of very simple you just sum the amount column sum the amount column in this and that is going to give you the total transfer count so here we can simply go ahead and do sum of amount and that is going to be aliased as transfer total amount and we also need the approved total amount so approved total amount is again 
here we can use a slight different version of the if function that we already used for ones and zeros here what we can do is if we check whether state is approved then you return the same amount but if it is not approved then you return the value zero so what i'm saying is so approved so return the amount but if it is de declined you return zero then approved so this is amount 2000 and again 2000 okay so in this group right the first group if i sum this part up that is going to give you the approved total amount and that is what we see here as well and in this particular case it will add these two as well okay so if i go ahead and do if the state is equal to approved then you return the value in the amount column else you return zero and then you sum it up that is going to give you the approved total amount so we have this okay and since we do not need to order this by anything so i think this looks good let me put a semicolon here okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in this case so this is accepted let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases or not so yeah, this is accepted and this is how we do it not a difficult question but very lengthy in the terms that we need certain values but if you apply the very basic concept of grouping by certain columns and how to extract date and then how we can use some function to basically perform a count and also we use the appropriate use of some function as well also one thing here you can even improve this query that once you write this then instead of writing group by actually you can just you know give the number of the column so this is the first column that is going to appear this is the second co column that is going to appear so here even if i change this to one and two that is going to run and pass all the test cases so let me go ahead and run this again accept it and let me submit this as well so uh, again accept it so but like this kind of seems counterintuitive in the first pass but this is what you can do to even improve your formatting of the code so yeah this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or more efficient way to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and i will see you guys in the next video